believe it or not, there is actually a way to guarantee a lucid dream. And I know you've probably been told that it's not possible, I shouldn't promise you things like this, you can't guarantee it. Well, this is basically, this is virtually guaranteed. Like, if you do these steps, it's almost guaranteed, maybe like 99% guaranteed you will lucid dream. And the way I'm able to promise this is because I have analysed the mechanics of the dream world, and I've analysed the mechanics of sleep. And so, I'm sorry about the noise, by the way, it will go away in a second, I promise. And so the way it works is you have five sleep cycles in a given night of eight, eight to nine hours of sleep, right? And these sleep cycles consist of phases. The phases end in REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, and this is where most or all dreams happen. These REM phases, right? So again, five sleep cycles with REM phases at the end. The REM phases get longer and longer as you get more close, so you get closer to waking up. So just before you wake up, in the last one or two sleep cycles, your REM sleep will be much longer. It will be deeper, and the dreams you have there will be more intense, they'll be more vivid, they'll be easier to remember, and more likely that you'll become lucid. The sweet spot, so the, the, the point at which your being awake hormones, like you might have more adrenaline, more um, oxytocin, various other things, serotonin will spike start to rise at exactly the time where your REM sleep is also the longest in the last sleep cycle of the night and so what this means is that that is the sweet spot for lucid dreaming your melatonin is still high enough to keep you sedated and, and asleep but your serotonin and your adrenaline is starting to rise so that you're able to become awake in the dream and also be more conscious and unaware and alert it's a very perfect balance and it's a very nice mixture. So I, a few years back, invented a technique that I called the 90 Isles. And the idea behind this was to use 90 minute increments of time to induce a lucid dream. And my thoughts were, my, my hypothesis was that if you wake yourself up every 90 minutes for the whole night, you will catch yourself. It's like you're more likely to catch yourself in the middle of dreaming. And then you go back to sleep, and because you keep waking yourself up, most likely you're going to be tired. And so you'll be able to very quickly and easily go back to sleep and have a lucid dream. So the way that I'm able to guarantee a lucid dream is by saying, let's not focus too much on... It's almost like an ad adaptation, uh, an upgrade to my 90 IELTS technique. Ignore the first half of the night, because most of the time, the first half of the night, you're not going to lucid dream anyway. And if you do, it's going to be short. You're probably not going to remember it because it's going to be overwritten by subsequent sleep cycles, right? So what you can do is after four hours of sleep, then you start waking yourself up every 30 minutes. And and by the way, I should preface this by saying you will feel tired. <laughs> this won't feel good. Don't, don't do this on a school night. Don't do this on a work night. You will feel like crap. But the lucid dream is almost guaranteed because... The last four hours of the night is the time where you're going to have the longest REM sleep, uh, the, re the longest REM phases, and you're closer to waking up, so you're going to remember things more. So by interrupting your sleep every 30 minutes from that point on, so after four hours of normal sleep, you firstly you get all of the deep sleep you need because most deep sleep happens in the first two hours. So you shouldn't. I mean, disclaimer: I'm not a medical expert. You shouldn't have any ill effects from doing this. Don't do it more than one night in a row. So you have your deep sleep in the first two hours, three hours, and then after that you're, gonna, you're basically messing around with your REM sleep. You're basically interrupting your REM sleep constantly every 30 minutes, and this is increasing the chances that you will interrupt yourself in the middle of a dream. And really lucid dreaming, like what makes it easier and faster is just interrupting yourself in the middle of your dream, in the middle of your sleep. And then going back to sleep. This is the whole, uh, the whole preface, the whole premise, I should say, of the wake back to bed technique. Is you are waking yourself up during that point or just before that point of your last sleep cycle and your last REM phase, and then you're going back to sleep. And then when you go back to sleep, you have the intention. You you know you, you set the strong intention to have a lucid dream, and then that makes you enter the lucid dream. It makes it way more likely that you'll then enter the lucid dream. So I don't have a name for this technique yet. Maybe we could call it the 30 Isled. 
right? Because you're interrupting your, your sleep every 30 minutes after the first four hours. So the way it would look practically is you set an alarm to go off after four hours of sleep, then you wake up and then you set a recurring alarm to go off every 30 minutes. Now the recurring alarm needs to be, how do I say this? It needs to be a little bit of a gray area between like vividly waking you up and softly waking you up. The best sound to use would be like a gong or a soft singing bowl sound, like a soft meditation bell, like a really soft one. Not a gong like the really loud thing that's gonna, you know, <laughs> not the super loud, really uh, jarring gong. I'm talking about like a soft gong, like a very, very soft, low, something that would wake you up, but it would wake you up softly and slowly. That's the sound you wanna use. And so, so you do this, So and then every 30 minutes you wake up, write your dreams down if you remember them, and go back to sleep saying, I am lucid. And you repeat the words, I am lucid, I am lucid, until you go back to sleep. And so if you do this, you should have, I haven't calculated the math on this yet, but let's say if you have four hours of sleep left, that's two, <clears throat> two, two segments of 30 minutes for each hour, so that's eight. So you'll have eight chances to lucid dream, okay? So you're roughly three times more likely to lucid dream than using my 90 aisle technique and the 90 aisle technique was already pretty much guaranteed to give you a lucid dream so it's worked well for me try it out let me know how it goes like maybe bookmark this video and come back once you've tried it for a couple of nights but don't try it don't try it more than one night in a row because you're gonna feel tired I promise you you will feel you will feel tired and irritated the next day because you're interrupting your sleep constantly obviously right but give it a try and then come back to this video and leave a comment letting me know if it works or not.